Welcome to the presentation of gluteal exercise for rehabilitation. My name is Bina Matthew. I'm a musculoskeletal specialist physio and currently working as an extended school practitioner. The aims of today's presentation is mainly looking at the latest EMG studies primarily on gluteal exercises and also to compare and find the most suitable exercises in activating and strengthening glutes in a clinical setting. Why gluteal exercises? Therapists use gluteal exercises for a variety of common conditions, starting from back pain to ankle pain. It has an important role following ACL reconstruction as well as in management of overuse injuries like ITB syndrome and patellofemoral pain syndrome. It's a key stabilizer of the hip and and its use has been documented in osteoarthritis as well as in uh, impingement syndromes. Beyond rehabilitation, it might be also be useful for improving gains and explosive strength and power in athletes who need it for running, sprinting and pivoting activities. A brief look on the anatomy. It's one of the largest muscle of the posterior chain. 80% of the muscle is inserted into the ITB and about 20% into the gluteal tuberosity. It's the most powerful hip extensor and the external rotator. Multitasking at its best. Glute max is involved in a lot of functions. Mobility wise it's a key extensor as well as an extensor rotator. Along with the sores it's involved in uh, stability of the posterior pelvic tilt. With regards to stability, it provides segmental stabilization to the lumbar spine. It's the primary uh, and the most powerful uh, muscle for centralizing the head of femur and it gives force closure for the SIG. Along with the quads, it's important for shock absorption. The glute mead. It has an important stability role, especially in weight-bearing position, which involves single leg activity. The most important fibers are the posterior fibers, which mainly are involved in extension, abduction, and external rotation. This presentation is based on the results of seven high-quality articles, which were published from 2007 to 2013. The articles in total had looked around about 45 glute med exercise and about 38 glute max exercises. They all used percentage of maximal voluntary contraction as their outcome measure. They compared the readings with the different exercises and figured out the percentages. Previous studies from Anderson has shown that you need at least 40 to 60 percentage of MVC for strengthening. Less than that might not be useful for strengthening purposes. From that huge list, uh, I have reduced it to 15 exercise purely based on the data and also the ease of clinical application. I've categorized them into three distinct phases based on the level of level of difficulty and progression which could be applicable in a clinical setting. So moving on to the exercises. In the first phase in when the pain could be high and you want to just introduce it for activation purposes the three useful exercises from the research has been prone heel squeeze, bridging and clam. Prone heel squeeze is a, is a great exercise for uh, activation where the patient lies on the stomach. The knees are flexed to roughly 90 degrees and slightly apart and the patient is asked to squeeze the heels together as hard as they can. Next is the bridge which is a great exercise for the glute max. One of the things I've noticed in clinical practice is the cramping of the hamstring, which could indicate that the hamstrings are overactive in hip extension. This can be corrected by moving the heels closer or by instructing to push through the heels more. And the last one in this group is the clamp, which is normally done between hip flexion between 45 to 60 degrees. In the next phase, I have split it into two. 2A, which is mainly mat-based. 
So as you can see from the exercises, it's a progression from the previous ones. The single, single leg bridging will need more core control than the normal bridge. And the sideline abduction involves a long lever. And another useful exercise is the four point hip extension. In the same phase, we are moving into more functional standing based exercise. The first one is a lateral band walk, which is a great exercise to involve the glute med in a weight bearing position. The next one is the step up both in the side as well as in the front. The final phase in the mat based exercise, we got three side bridge to neutral, side plank with hip abduction and front plank with hip extension with hip extension all of them need a good control of the core and key thing is to ensure that the spine is in neutral and there is no excessive lordosis the last three exercises of the 15 are the unilateral wall squat single leg squat and the single leg deadlift. You need good balance as well as good mobility in the thoracic spine, hip and ankle to enable you to do all these three exercises. The limitations. These exercises have been done on a young fit population from age from 18 to 13 and none of them had any recent history of lower limb injury and all of them used surface EMG electrodes which has its limitations. So this is the list of all the articles which I've used in the presentation. The exercises as well as the references is available for free download at the bottom of this video. Moving on, going to the next phase. So although those exercises might be useful in the initial rehab phases, we need more challenging and safe exercise in the advanced stage, especially if you're dealing with an athletic population like runners or other sports. So, and also we need to know how we can link these high-end rehab exercises with exercises like plyometrics, dynamic warm-up, and mobility. Myself and uh, my training partner, Glenn Robbins, we conduct a one-day workshop through Physio UK. It's a highly practical course aimed to develop clinical skills to integrate strength and conditioning in the rehabilitation of runners or any sport which involves running or sprinting if you're interested in improving the rehab outcomes of runners and also to injury the injury risk, you might be interested in the functional screening as well as the hand rehabilitation. In the course, we'll be covering different exercises from strength, plyometrics, hip stability, dynamic core and mobility drills. If you want to be updated with the latest research, especially on the running population, you'll be interested in all the key research findings. At the end of the course, you'll have a toolkit of various treatment and assessment tools that, no, that don't need any fancy equipment. For further information of our one day running courses, please visit www.physiouk.co.uk slash runners and you can download the free handout with the references and the exercises below this video. Thank you for your time and hope you find the presentation useful.